This is my favorite quote. Mm. To those who warned this was what was going to happen with Trump, you've been proven right. It's a sobering moment. Yeah, I was right and you were wrong. But I don't see any humility from you today when it comes to Trump. You said you were done with him on 2021. What's he done good to win you back? Well, it's not about winning me back. Yeah, well, you said I'm done with Donald Trump. I'm no, wondering why you're not. Why you're now... It's not about winning me back. It I, is, Piers. This interview is about you. Progressive journalist Mehdi Hassan was finally able to corner the KG Piers Morgan and reverse roles, interviewing Morgan himself and grilling him and humiliating him for his embarrassing support of Donald Trump. And this is intensely satisfying, and I can't wait for you to watch it. But before we do, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, I've got several clips to show you here. And again, I think you're really going to enjoy this. Mehdi Hassan is someone I am a big fan of. I admire quite a bit. Uh, one of the best moments of my YouTube career was interviewing Mehdi a couple of months ago, and I found him incredibly intelligent, incredibly passionate, incredibly sincere. And he walks a tightrope given that he is a strident critic of the Biden-Harris administration for understandable reasons over their Gaza and Israel policy, while also relentlessly advocating for the need to defeat Donald Trump in the upcoming election and you know, not indulging in any false equivalents. And he's had viral moments on Piers Morgan, right? He is one of the most formidable foes, certainly of Piers Morgan, but also just Republicans in general. And when I interviewed Mehdi, I said, listen, one of the cards that Piers Morgan always plays with you is that he's the interviewer. And so when you start to turn the tables and really grill him, he says, I'm I'm interviewing you, Mehdi. You don't get to ask me questions. You must answer my questions, my biased, you know, dishonestly framed questions. I said, you should interview Piers Morgan on Medi Unfiltered, on Zateo, which, by the way, you should subscribe to that if you haven't yet. Um, and finally, he was able to pin Morgan down and get an interview out of him. And the whole thing was really awesome. And Piers Morgan really struggled here in a way we've just not seen before. So with that in mind, we're going to play these clips and unpack it together. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. You think Trump will win. I know. I do. You're a big supporter of his, a friend of Donald Trump's. Well, no, no, what no, I don't hang understand. On, don't, don't, hang on. You say this a lot. Don't categorize me thinking he's going to win with my... No, no, no. I'm categorizing your support based on what I've you I've never say. told anyone to vote for Trump. But you, I can't but, vote but for Trump. You always Trump. defend him. No, I just, I, we no, just no, came from a I recording of your show and you spent one hour defending him. I don't him. know. You were unrelentingly attacking him as usual. Uh, using phrases like his rally here was the, akin to the Nazis. And I think that's ridiculous. And I took I you didn't on hear you saying anything critical. That doesn't mean I support him. It okay. means I think, I think that when people like you say, if he's I had, the new If Hitler, I had my I'm phone, like, which on. I don't, I would just open it and show you all your New York Post columns, which are all anti-Harris and pro-Trump. But anyway, I think she's useless. Let me ask you this. So this is the first one, which I, I'm glad this happened early on, because for the first half of the conversation, they discussed... Gaza and Israel. And then when the topic turned to domestic politics, Piers Morgan does his usual shtick. Oh, I'm a nonpartisan journalist. I don't have a particular bias. Yes, I'm Trump's friend. Yes, I relentlessly praise him, but that doesn't mean I support him. And Mehdi Hassan points this out. Set Piers Morgan uncensored, his show aside. Uh, Piers Morgan is also a contributor to the New York Post, a right-wing domestic media outlet. And if you look at his columns, Mehdi Hassan is right, and I've made this point on Twitter relentlessly. They are always pro-Trump, anti-Democrat, relentlessly. This is so important. People can say that they don't have a bias, but when your actions and your comments reveal that you prefer one side over the other, by definition, you have a bias. And by pretending that you don't, you just come off really dishonest. And unfortunately, that's what Piers Morgan does. Another clip. Yeah. Yeah. So then how can you say that he should be president again? Because I think in politics, uh, people like Trump have had periods in their career where they've been doing ridiculous things, which I've heavily criticized before, but they've also done other things which in the totality of how you judge them actually have made them electable. Trump is gonna win, in my estimation, because for all your shrieking about how despicable he is and what a Nazi You said he was despicable. I said many bad things about him. Exactly, so why are you picking on me? But I've also said, unlike you, I've said positive things about him as well. But that just makes you look silly, not me. Why? Why can't it be? It makes me look balanced. Well, hold on. Hang on, it makes me look balanced. No, it doesn't. It does. I I want to read you. It makes you unbalanced. Well, let's, for our viewers who might not, they might just see your (laughs) pro-Trump stuff. So before I play the rest of this clip, I want you to think about that. To Piers Morgan, balance, fairness, sanity, is when you have an equal number of criticisms and endorsements. When you say, for every one bad thing you say about Trump, you praise him and vice versa. But in the first clip I played you, Mehdi Hassan pointed out the fact that all of Piers Morgan's, the overwhelming majority at a bare minimum, like 90% of his New York Post columns are pro-Trump and anti-Democrat. So Piers Morgan violates his own standards because Mehdi Hassan could have said, okay, but then by that metric, you need to start writing a bunch of New York Post columns and catch up where you criticize Trump and praise Kamala because right now it's totally lopsided. 
You see how he, like every other Trump supporter, betrays their own standards to grade Trump on a curve? Food for thought. Let's just say some of the stuff you've said. I went back and read your Daily Mail column the day after January 6th. Yeah. You went way beyond anything I've said about Trump. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you said he's morphed into a monster. Yeah. There's no way back for him. Yeah. Deranged figurehead. Yeah. Lost his mind. I'm done with Donald Trump. That part clearly wasn't true. Such a person should not be president of the United States for a second longer. That person was true. Why are you suddenly now I was back? Also he's done, actually worse today than he was on I was actually, I don't agree with that. But I was also done he's with the manager of Arsenal. And then I turned around and, and after time he won me around again. So it's all again. It's not a game, but I think I mean, you said very strongly he's 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 deranged. Yes. And by the way, a monster. And by the way, we should use the twenty fifth amendment. Watched, had you watched my interview with Donald Trump I have. when I launched Piers Morgan Uncensored, you will know that somebody sent him all of this, yeah. Nigel Farage, before the interview, and he read it all for himself. And we had a good old ding dong about it, right? Uh, there are lots of that doesn't make it any less weird that you're sitting here saying. I think what happened on January sixth was terrible. So why does he get to be? Pre- why does that not disqualify him from the job? Uh, because I you said it on January 7th, you said it disqualified him. I agree. I've so changed, what changed? I've changed my mind. Why? Is Be- it because he's closer to power now? Uh, no, it's because I think... So this is the thing. This is where you know Piers Morgan's opinions on Trump. Listen, I don't think Piers Morgan's a stupid guy. And I've said this before. Part of the reason why I am on his ass so much, metaphorically speaking, is because I think that, number one, he's incredibly talented. Number two, I think he has a charisma about him. Number three, I think he's very thick skin. I think when he's at his best, He's actually one of the most influential media figures. I mean, and, and we see this when it comes to foreign policy. So he can go on contentious issues like Ukraine and Russia, Israel, Gaza, and he can play the devil's advocate no matter who he's talking to. So if he has a pro-Palestinian guest or a pro-Israeli uh, guest, he'll grill them both. He knows how to play the devil's advocate. And I think that that's a, a fair, an essential component of responsible journalism, the ability to have an adversarial interview and grill people and throw them hardballs. But when it comes to domestic politics, when it comes to American politics, he loses that ability. It's one softball after another for Trump supporters, and he reserves all his hardballs for Trump's critics. It's a staggering asymmetry for which he is being relentlessly called out. That's a problem. And the weakness of his position goes here. Mehdi Hassan makes a point. Okay, well, you said when he left office, he was disqualified. He hasn't been in office for the past three or four years. So he couldn't have done anything as president to redeem himself in your mind, right? Because there was just no opportunity for do. So basically the final point of Trump in power, you say that Trump is unfit to hold power and now you've changed your mind and Pierce is unable to answer the question. Well, I, well, I've just changed my mind. I've just changed my mind. Okay, but why? Why? And the fact of the matter is he's not able to give a good answer for this, which is why he just keeps deferring to, well, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. And he won't answer Medi's questions Directly, that's a sign of serious weakness. Sometimes I, I just don't understand how you can Depends say what he does. I don't well, nothing's changed since January seventh. Mm. He is the same guy who did an insurrection. Mm. He'll probably do an insurrection again. Look, you hate him and everything. You hate him. For. No, you no, hate no. him. I you said you said Trump's gone mad. <laughs> I'm <laughs> done with Donald Trump. Yeah, and this is what you said on January eleventh. This is my favorite. I don't know quote what you think the God truth because I've, I've this is my about this a the lot. God truth is that you're not consistent. But listen right. to me. Why has he changed my mind? This is my favorite quote to those who warn this was what was going to happen with Trump. You've been proven right. It's a sobering moment. Yeah, I was right and you were wrong. But I don't see any humility from you today when None, it comes to no, Trump. No, Even because, though you were wrong in 2020. No, because even when Trump does good things, you never acknowledge it. What did he do good since 2021? Uh, what about killing the leader of ISIS? He didn't do, I said since 2021. We're talking about, you said you were done no. with him on 2021. What's no. he done good to win you back? Well, it's not about winning me back. Yeah, well, you said I'm done with Donald Trump. I'm no, wondering why you're not, why I, you're now. It's not about winning me back. It I, is, Piers. My view is about you. My view of Trump. There you go. He can't answer the question. It's either because he has a personal friendship with Trump, which he has talked about. He was, the, you know, I think he won the first season of The Celebrity Apprentice. He constantly brings that up. Um, it could be because he thinks Trump is going to win the election and therefore he wants to be closer to power, sort of access journalism. Number three, it could just be to own the libs, right? That There's a huge market for that. Uh, that drives, that is an animus for so much of the MAGA right, where they'll cut their nose off to spite their face. They just want to own the libs. And it could be possible that Piers Morgan is animated by that as well. Or it could be because he believes it's more financially beneficial to own the libs and back Trump as opposed to have the more balanced journalism that he has on foreign policy where he'll grill both sides. I don't know what it is. All I do know is you can see the visible discomfort where he's not able to articulate a cogent reason for why he has reversed his position on Donald Trump after having such a justifiably harsh position after Trump's, uh, you know, failed insurrection on January 6th. 
This is an embarrassment. Like we are seeing Morgan being humiliated in real time. Another clip. Do you? I think Occam's razor says if everyone who worked with them, almost everyone who said we can't endorse them again, then they, we should take their the word for line it. Is, the people do, who know him better, the know him better line, than you. The bottom line is, do I think he's a... Well, they, don't know, they probably don't know him better than me, actually. But they worked with him, they do. Do I think Donald Trump is a fascist? No, I don't. Do I think he's a neo-Nazi running a bunch of neo-Nazis? So, no, I don't. So you when he do, says, and well, I think it's not just me. By the way, I think that view is nuts. Really? So Robert yes. Paxton, I think America's preeminent, he's a new Nazi. Robert Paxton mm. is America's preeminent scholar of fascism, mm. historian at Columbia University Emeritus. He said, I don't think Trump's a fascist. For four years, mm. people are exaggerating stuff. Now he says, yeah, actually, I think he is a fascist. And by the way, you know why? Because you love to talk in the air, Piers. Facts. This is what he's saying and doing. He says, mm. I'll terminate the Constitution. I'll be a dictator. Why didn't he in, the, the, why didn't uh, he in the first uh, four years? Because you had Jim Mattis and John Kelly who won't be there. Oh, I see. He said, I'll terminate the Constitution. And he didn't have Supreme Court immunity, which he has mm. now. He says, uh, you won't have to vote for me if you vote in four years. Mm. I'll put the National Guard, he said to Maria Bartiromo the other day, against the enemy within, against mm. Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff. You're not supportive of that, right? You don't support the National Guard being Not as that's who he was talking about. He said the enemy within. But he was talking about using the... So then Piers Morgan does... Was so many MAGA Republicans do. Sorry, I'm still coming down with a cold, so I'm trying not to like hack up a lung here. He does what so many MAGA Republicans do and Diet MAGA do, which is, well, Trump, I sure Trump said this thing, but he actually was saying this. And by the way, you know the double standard is real because when President Biden recently made his garbage gaffe, Piers Morgan rejects out of hand that Biden could have meant anything different, even though Biden immediately came out and said, hey, just to clarify, this is what I meant. The double standard is sickening and it's indefensible and, again, betrays the real weakness of Piers Morgan's position. Well, when he was talking about the enemy within and he specifically referenced non-rioters and just political opponents, he was actually referring to rioters and not his political opponents. So dishonest. Donald Trump was given multiple off ramps by sympathetic hosts begging him basically to walk it back and to take it back. And he didn't. And he doubled down. He says the people who don't support him are the enemy within. And he wants to be able to use the National Guard and the military against them. And he specifically mentioned Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi. So, again, Piers Morgan is engaging in the absolute not only double standards to the extreme, but just blatant dishonesty. When Mehdi Hassan is able to list off a number of facts about Donald Trump, which are clearly authoritarian and fascistic in general. and where there's no counterpart in the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party doesn't have a figure who has said or done or promised to do a fraction of the authoritarian things that Donald Trump has said and done and promised to do. Again, Piers Morgan is totally unprepared for this, not because he's stupid, but because he has committed himself to an indefensible position. It's really fun, interesting to see in real time. And then I, I love, again, I love this idea. Well, if he wanted to terminate the Constitution, why didn't he do it? In his first four years, well, because he was surrounded by the very people who are now calling him fascistic that he won't have around him in a second term. And Piers Morgan just shrugs. He's like, oh, OK, fine, because he has no answer to it. This is an irrefutable position. If when you point out that people who know Trump professionally far better than Piers Morgan does and actually helped him wield power and they say, hey, we know better than you because we were there and we're telling you this guy's nuts and he's authoritarian. You actually don't have a satisfying counter argument to that. So, but again, that's a problem of Piers Morgan's own making. One last clip. An interview longer mm. than me. When he called, when he told four women of color to go back to where they came from, mm. was that racist in your view? I can't remember the quote. He told Ilhan Omar, AOC, okay. Ayanna Presley to go back on Twitter. It was very famous. Okay. It was a huge. If that's what he said, today. then that would seem to me to be racially insensitive. He, yes, but not racist. I don't think he's a racist. That's not what I asked. Well, you did ask me that. But now I'm asking, is it racist to tell four women of color to go back to their I countries? Did, look, here's it's my, a very simple question. You don't want to answer because you know it's racist, Piers. No, I think he has said racially insensitive comments. That's a cop out. But I don't think he's Uncensored a racist. Uncensored Piers Morgan can't say the R word. <laughs> I don't think last he's a racist. Question, last question on this. Do you hold the Democrats and Kamala Harris to a double standard? If she had stood up at a rally and spoke about a woman's tennis player's vagina mm. for 15 minutes, you'd have been... All over it, attacking her, you mocking her. You weren't Did genuinely. You, care you weren't genuinely upset. That's not about what that. I asked. I so, and again, Piers Morgan doesn't want to answer. That to me is the most important question. Do you hold them to a double standard? And he does. If I had one quibble with Mehdi as a, you know, far be it for me, he is he is a professional journalist. He is an excellent debater. I consider myself a pretty good debater. He's even better. If I had one quibble, I wish he would have given a different example than the equivalent of the Arnold Palmer's penis joke. Right. Because Piers Morgan will go on to deflect it. Oh, I would just say if she'd done that, she had a great sense of humor. I would say, Piers, do you hold Kamala Harris and Democrats to a double standard? <laughs> because if she said, I want to go after the media, like this is a, this is the one for me that would have been a good one. You know, Piers, 
Do you hold Kamala Harris and the Democrats to a double standard? Because Donald Trump has repeatedly, repeatedly, even in this election cycle, and we have a montage, we have a list of quotes, we can just, we can put it in front of your face in case you haven't seen it, where Donald Trump has repeatedly threatened to go after the media, 60 Minutes, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, he's name dropped them specifically because he thinks that they're unfair to him, where he wants to use the levers of power to go after him. Piers, you also still work for Fox News. You have a relationship with News Corp and Rupert Murdoch. You appear on Fox News still semi-frequently. So Joe Biden's the president of the United States. Are you comfortable with Joe Biden? How would you feel and how would you react if Joe Biden threatened to go after your network, Fox News, and justify it by saying, hey, they had to pay $800 million in a defamation settlement because they signal boosted the lies of Donald Trump. So we actually have a predicate to say that this news network is really corrupt and dangerous and we're going to crush them and punish them using the powers of the government. What if Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and the Democrats said a fraction on that subject the way that Trump does? How would you react to it? Would you just shrug and just not cover it because you don't talk about it when Donald Trump says it? Or do you hold the Democrats and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to a higher standard? I would go with a better example than the Arnold Palmer's penis joke and a female counterpart to it. But Piers Morgan doesn't want to answer the question because the truth is he does. He does hold the Democrats and Kamala Harris to a much higher standard. And he grades Trump and the Republicans on a curve. And that is, if anything else, no matter where you stand, if you hold one side to a lower standard than the other, you are by definition dishonest. Whatever your standard is, high or low, it should be applied across the board. That's the only way where you can ever evaluate two things by holding them by definition to the same standard. Piers Morgan doesn't do that because he knows Donald Trump will always fail and always lose if he holds he and his opponents to the same standard. Pretty gross stuff. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments, and please make sure you subscribe to Zateo.